Hi, my name is Corinna. Welcome to Beginner's Ear at the Green Space. Um, we're going to spend this next hour connecting with each other and with ourselves over some beautiful music and communal silence and mindfulness. Um, I'm so grateful to WQXR for having brought this idea into this beautiful space. Um, it's always worth pointing out that it's an unusually well soundproofed pocket of an unusually noisy part of New York City. Um, and so just, just having that silence is a real treat. Um, and I'm grateful for the support of the Jerome L. Green Foundation for their support and also to Steinway for providing a beautiful piano. So I came at this work, um, as some of you know, having reviewed hundreds of concerts um, for the New York Times as a, as a critic. And in, in that capacity, not only did I have a lot of time to listen to a lot of different music, but I also got to really spend some time looking at how people listen. Um, and it just struck me that there are so many prohibitions around noise in the concert hall, whether it's against clapping in the wrong place or coughing or cell phones going off. Um, and yet even when we enforce all of those prohibitions, there is still a lot of kind of mental chatter and a lot of um, inner noise that we bring into the concert setting, um, often just that clings to us from whatever we brought with us into the room. Um, and so I really come to believe that a little bit of mindfulness practice at the beginning um, can really help us clear that mental chatter, that mental static, so that we're more receptive to the music that comes to us. Um, today that music is in the hands of Alessio Bax and Lucille Chang, two absolutely phenomenal pianists uh, separately, and an absolute force of nature when they share a Steinway as they will today. Um, I invite you to join in as Thomas will guide us in um, a mindfulness practice for the first 10 minutes. Um, do spend a minute silencing your cell phones if you do have one in your pocket, that would be great. Um, he will ring a little gong at the end of the mindfulness practice and that'll be the moment that Lucille and Alessio will um, know that it's time for them to begin playing. Um, the music will just kind of flow and do its thing and unfold in the space. Um, and at the end, after maybe a few more seconds of beautiful silence, we'll hear the gong one more time and then we can reconnect over some shared experiences, comments um, and a little Q&A with the artists as well. Um, maybe just one, one word for anyone who is new to the idea of meditation. Um, you're invited to close your eyes, um, make yourself comfortable. But as with anything, if you need to shift, if you need to open your eyes, if you feel the need to cough, don't be self-conscious. There is no wrong way of doing this. Um, thank you so much, and I'll see you on the other side. Can you guys hear me? I can never quite get that mic right. Thanks, Corinna. Thanks, you too. Um, yeah, we're going to step into the practice. I do want to say uh, there might be a strong desire to open your eyes at some point with two people playing the piano. If you need to open your eyes, open your eyes for a minute. You know, like go wherever you need to go. The practice of meditation should be the practice of being who you are. So with that, um, find your feet on the ground. Let the chair give you some stability and find a place of comfort. We want to allow the body to relax enough that we can inhabit it with ease. Let your eyelids softly hang down like curtains. And let's just take a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth to come into the room. need to make minor adjustments as we move through, please do. 
We want to let gravity help us find our alignment. So bring your attention to the top of your head. Feel the center point at the top of the head. Come to the left temple. Come to the right temple. Take a little clench in your teeth and feel the temples respond. The muscle in the side of the temple letting go as the jaw releases. Feel the muscles around the ears, relaxing the ears, falling into a natural position. Come to your forehead. And then maybe just scrunch your forehead once, squeeze your eyes closed, and then release them. Let the muscles of the forehead and the eyelids and the eyes for this time that we're here. Let go of the pressures of the day and the stories of deadlines and have to's. Feel the breath come in through the nose, traveling down into your lungs. The breath in literally to inspire feel the movement of life in a moment of breath as you inhale filling the chest You exhale, rooting down into the ground. Take a slight rotation of the head, just a little bit to feel the muscles of the neck. And then just come to a easy point of balance. The head can relax with the neck and the shoulders. into the center of the chest. And feel the most familiar rhythm you know, the beat of your heart. down to the abdomen and on the next breath in 
Let your abdomen soften and fill a little bit as you inhale. You can let your weight push into the back of the chair a little bit so that your body can relax and let the abdomen really soften. As the abdomen releases, let the lower back also find its point of balance. Sitting down into the earth through the chair. The torso lengthening as the head gently presses up to the stars. the left hip, the upper leg and left knee come to a natural resting place. From the knee down through the lower leg on the left side and ankle and foot. like the trunk of a tree just resting into the earth, naturally upright. Come to the right hip. Right upper leg, right knee. The leg finding its comfortable position. The lower leg, ankle and foot on the right side, rooting into the earth. Take another deep breath in through the nose and let the shoulders, as you inhale, find their natural resting place. Let them move if they need to, adjust, so that they can hang down without any effort. The upper arm on the left side, the left elbow, the left forearm, wrist, the left hand, all the way down to the fingertips, a flow of energy through the arm, and come to the right shoulder and right arm. Right elbow, right forearm, right wrist. Right hand and right fingertips. All releasing tension and pouring down. your whole body upright, supported and balanced with ease. The 
mind and heart open and receiving as we co-create this space together. A snapshot in your awareness of this moment so that it's here for you anytime you want to come back into this place. One more deep breath in, softly exhaling.
Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Alessio and Lucille and everybody in the room. Um, we don't normally clap at the end of one of these, but this really felt like an ending that maybe deserves a quick round of applause. So thank you. Um, wow. Um, so I think some of you, I, I'm beginning to see some faces in the room who've been to some of these before, and um, the, the music that we've been placing into this kind of meditative setting has been very varied from week to week. And um, today was, for me, a really interesting experience because this was music that was so much more muscular and in some ways sort of architecturally massive than some of the other programs that we've had. Um, and I think, for me, one thing that was extraordinary being in the room with this, these sounds uh, was how viscerally I felt it. I don't know if other people felt like the, just the impact of sound waves kind of in different parts of my body, and um, and then also the incredible subtleties and the changes of dynamics in, in that first piece. But Alessio, do you wanna just tell us like what you chose to play when this invitation came your way and why you thought that these pieces could benefit from this kind of listening? Well, uh, first of all, I have to say, um, I mean, this is such a, a wonderful and interesting concept and thank you for having us here um, uh, for me I'm, I'm really um, meditation has somewhat changed my life improved my life in the last few years and I have to say that medi meditation and music especially classical music it's something that I cannot do together because as soon as I it must be similar for you as soon as I hear music I, I, I tend to analyze it and uh, and so um, I thought about what meditation does to me and to most people is to really um, um, make you more sensitive to um, to everything. You know, more conscious of what you do, or how you breathe, uh, what you hear, and uh, just heightens uh, all senses. And so I wanted to choose repertoire that that really had a broad broad range. So from the most intimate parts in the Schubert and beautiful uh, moments in the first piece of the Debussy to really dramatic. Uh, moments like in, in the Schubert itself, it really uh, describes perfectly human life. <laughs> you know, there's everything in it, and and the joy of the last and uh, last piece of the WC, and and see how um, how um, the audience uh, would feel feel all this emotion in 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 a relatively short amount of time. Yeah, thank you, um, Lucille. What was it like um, playing into the silence and into that attentive space? Uh, honestly, it was a little hard to get into at first because I was actually so relaxed. This was my first uh, guided <laughs> meditation. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> I'll be honest. And um, just to get the flow of it. But then uh, my, all my senses were hyper um, sensitive, I, I guess. And um, I guess it showed also in the, in the sense of my dynamic choices. Uh, usually I'm not so aware of what's happening and I kind of go with the flow, but this time I felt very conscious of every little movement, every dynamic, every pedaling, and, and so actually my brain was on overdrive. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was a, a wonderful experience. I, I expected the opposite, but then all my senses were tingling actually. So it was very Th Thomas like what what was it like for you like did you because you've done a few of these and this was like one of the most the, the sort of maybe almost like narrative like overtly storytelling pieces that we've had Yeah it was um this was the perfect one for me actually it's become a practice for me at this point cuz I've started going online and just listening to ones that we've done already with my phone off just with the audio with headphones on cuz they're on YouTube and um, the experience of meditating, which is ironic that most people don't realize this until the first time they meditate, is that what comes to the foreground is the madness of your mind. And it sounds very much like that. <laughs> <laughs> and what was amazing for me was that like, when, when you did drop into the WC in those like, quiet moments, I went through the cacophony of my mind on your journey, through their minds that made that music and coming out of you, and then came back to me. And it was the first time I really realized it was the same. Like, this is what my mind does when I'm meditating in silence. It's externalized in a way. But then I would find that core me inside of there again, 
and it was kind of, yeah, the, the way you planted the quiet places amidst the kind of mountain ranges, like these plateau, hidden plateaus amidst the mountain ranges was kind of how it felt to me, was such a, like my body was in all these things, and then it was like, okay, we're back, we can, mm -hmm. and then we're back in it again. And it was, yeah, it was amazing for me. I, yeah. um, is there anyone in the audience who would like to, to just share um, what, what the experience was like or how that music landed um, in this particular setting? Um, there, there are microphones, but you can also just shout out if you have a thought that you'd like to share. Okay. Um, so I have to admit that I actually opened my eyes in the very last movement because oh. until then I was really enjoying just having that visceral experience close to the sounds. But, but then there came a moment when I really wanted to see and I, I, I could also hear the page turns. <laughs> and I was just aware of how frequent they are in four hands piano music, right? Because there's so many staves, there's so much music on each page. Um, and just to those of you who aren't aware, um, Alessio and Lucilla are married, and um, you know it's it's Valentine's Day, and um, <laughs> it's it's funny, you know. There are so many ways you can uh, tell whether a couple is is in a good place, and I sometimes, you know, you watch like a couple like cooking in a really small kitchen and it's like this ballet of just perfectly choreographed mm -hmm. unison and and that's what it's like watching the two of you especially in that last balletic movement um and and i cannot imagine how you you practice just getting both your bodies and then your minds in sync as musicians like can you just maybe just give us a few thoughts on that um wow well, that's, that's a big question uh I <laughs> I mean, any chamber music is, is, is very interesting to analyze because you're making yourself, you're making music and somebody else is making music and somehow you have to speak with one voice. But there's nothing quite like sharing the same, the same instrument. Um, I mean, the way piano, pianists make sound is not just by playing one note, by playing lots of notes together and make them sound. So you're never in control uh, when you share, share the instrument, the same the keyboard, you're never in control of what's coming out. So you have to be in each other's mind, uh, breathe together, and then at the end it's, it's really a switch. So uh, it's either, either it plays or it doesn't play, either it works or it doesn't work. There's no, um, no way to overanalyze that to be exactly together other than feeling it together. And I have to say this experience really, um, really made, you, made us more aware of that, of that process of what we probably do subconsciously a lot. Uh, and it, it's, it's quite interesting. As, as Lucille said, it was hard to uh, get into it in the beginning because uh, we, in a regular performance, there's that element of, of, of uh, adrenaline and nervousness that we're so used to, uh, it's almost become a bit of an addiction. You, 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 you learn to control it, but you need it to, 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 um, to get into it. But, but then we felt that slowly the music got, got more and more intense and, and, and the audience, oh my God, was, this is really a very different audience that, that, that you would get at, at a noisy performance in Carnegie Hall, <laughs> you know, where, where you have to really try to focus as much as you can not to be dis distracted sometimes yeah. by, by the noise. And, and you felt, uh, I felt that uh, emotionally that everybody was with us. What you described uh, before, uh, it's exactly what music should be. And to be able to convey that, it's really a joy for us. Yeah, thank you so much. I mean, I, th I think, you know, my experience is that with, with musicians, uh, certainly of your caliber, and uh, any audience will, will get to that point. You know, it just sometimes takes a while. It's like the music is almost the practice that gets everybody into the same um, attend to frequency and what's just a shame is that those first moments are a little bit lost you know and um, and so I, I was sort of part of the, the idea of beginner's ears to see like what could we what could we create that would would have those conditions from the first note so that really every note matters um, and this was like a really special experience certainly for me and I really thank you for being part of it thank you Thomas mm -hmm. um, and thank you all for being um, <laughs> game and um, and making space I just yeah everything. yeah <laughs> did it was anyone else almost shocked when they abruptly changed positions because my eyes were closed did you change yes. I was sitting and my eyes were closed and all of a sudden there was this like violent movement for a second <laughs> and I was like, what's happening? <laughs> and then I realized you changed positions. Yeah, for the WC. For the WC we changed and positions. It was no, no, actually I, I played that, that WC with <laughs> Alessio. Like, I, like, yeah, that was me. <laughs> it was amazing how like pop out, pop 
and <laughs> moment of like, oh, oh right, wow. we're in here. Yeah. It brought me into the room again in this other yeah. way. They're involved bodies making that music. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much. Um, please help spread the word. If, if you are on social media, tag us, Beginner's Ear and WQXR and The Green Space. Um, and do come back. Uh, next week, uh, we have Anthony McGill of the New York Philharmonic, a wonderful clarinetist, uh, joining forces with Amadi Azikiwe, a wonderful violist, and Kyle Walker, kind of a rising star pianist. Um, and there will be some music for solo uh, instruments and then them all coming together as well. Um, then on the 28th, uh, there's a really wonderful classical guitarist, uh, Artyom Derbored from Russia. And on March 6th, um, we're moving uh, to uh, the Middle East with music from the Lebanese violinist composer Layal Shaker. Um, and I really would love to see many of you back. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>